Hello friends and welcome back to the Take Two podcast. Uh, yeah, I'm still doing this occasionally. Uh, I know I don't promote as much as tag commentaries, but it's still there. So I got some stuff on there for you to check out if you're curious. Uh, thanks for joining us here. Uh, we have a very special guest with us. Hello, Mr. Griff. How are you? I'm good, man. How are you? Doing good, man. How are you? Um, glad to be here. Glad to have, be here with you for this one. This is a bit of a big undertaking for us so we want to want to do it right you know do it together yeah just have some fun but to all of you who are wondering the uh subject of this what we're gonna do is uh so griff and i had this idea where i he wanted to do a a movie do a movie review as a revenge thing for a movie that he dragged me to a couple of years ago. Oh gosh, was that when I dragged you to Resident Evil? Yeah. Oh gosh. Raccoon City. Yeah, I, I still feel bad about that. <laughs> Dude, I had such high hopes for that movie. Uh, and they... Uh... They exceeded your expectations. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh... Gosh, I got dedicated a whole episode just ripping that movie apart. Yeah, but we're not here to talk about. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. Anyway, um... we're just we're just giving you some lore here. Yeah. Uh, we're so I he said just choose a movie and subject me to it. To, yeah, uh, and I'll do to, it. To, yeah, because he doesn't really do like movie stuff anymore, and it and so it's like he's making an exception to do this. Yeah, I'll do I'll I'll do stuff like for your for your podcast, but or or just any content you do, but for myself, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so what we're going to do today is we're going to do a ZBH Explains It All on the MonsterVerse, which to those who don't know, that is the cinematic universe that Legendary and Warner Brothers has been making, starting with Godzilla 2014, going to this year with Godzilla X Kong, The New Empire. And it's spanning a decade, which is crazy to me. That it's that this has been going on for ten years. Yeah, I'm surprised it's been running this far. I wonder what else they're gonna do with it. Yeah, there's there's some rumors here and there what they're what what'll be next, but that but it's still going strong. It's that's it's one of the more consistent uh, cinematic universes lately. So I so every time they they make something, I watch it and I mostly mostly enjoy it. Yeah. So I'm just I, here, gonna hear here to talk about with you guys and with Griff, because he's seen some of this stuff, but he hasn't seen all of it, so I'm just going to give you and him all the all the backstory you can handle for all the all the films and the all the all that fun stuff. Yeah. I am not talking about Monarch, the, the show on Apple Plus, because I don't have Apple Plus, and I'm not talking about the Netflix Kong anime. I haven't seen that. I don't have Netflix. Mm, okay. Yeah, I haven't so, seen either one either. So we're just talking the movies. That's all. That's all we're talking about. If if I want a little bit of lore that was ex, that was from something else, I'll mention it. But mostly just the films. So Griff, do you think do you think I gave us a good mission debriefing here, or? Yeah, I think that's okay. pretty much straight to the point. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna gonna start things off where it all started back in 2014 with Gareth Edwards Godzilla. Griff, you ready to go? Yeah. All right, let's do this. Welcome back, friends. Uh, hope, hope you're still here with us, uh, despite whatever transitional nonsense I put between these. Uh, you know, you know I, that's a, that's the secret of video making. Everything's in the edit. You, you never you never know exactly what you're gonna get right. until, you, that, until you make it. That, that's the best type of bloopers, right there. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna talk briefly about uh, Godzilla 2014 to give you guys some background with it, our background with it, and. You know, just overall, uh, 
So this was released 2014, directed by Gareth Edwards. Uh, he, if you don't know who that is, he's the guy who directed Rogue One, a Star Wars story, and he directed The Creator from last year, which, Ooh. which I have to say, I have issues with these movies that he's made, but they're all really well directed. Like that's the one massive positive I have for Gareth Edwards is. He knows how to shoot shit and make it look good. Yeah. So, Griff, can I, this, I, I'm just curious about your backstory with 2014. Did you, like, when you, did you watch it, like, when it originally came out? Or? Uh, yeah, now, when I watched it, I didn't, like, go to the movie theater. I actually yeah. went to, um, it's not a blockbuster, it was a, um, it's not a movie gallery, but it is like Blockbuster. It used to be um, in Springfield. I can't remember the name of it. I don't think they're there anymore. Like Family Video. Family Video. Yeah, yeah. I actually went there and rented it, um, and then brought it back home and watched it. And uh, uh, I, I, I mean, I really liked it. Like I thought, I thought it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it's got. I know it's, it was kind of divisive when it first came out, and. And now, I mean, I always was on the side of liking it. But, yeah. But there's some issues I'll I'll talk about briefly that I have with yeah. the film, and I understand people's criticism of it. Now, when but, when that came out, we hadn't had a Godzilla movie for a while, right? Yeah. Like, it, since it, it it was the first American Godzilla since '98. Yeah. 98, so yeah. It, it was been a long time since we had taken a swing at the big lizard. So. Yeah. <laughs> so and we. You know, we talked at length about 98 and that we kind of liked that movie, yeah. even, even despite its flaws and everything. And so that that was fun talking about it. This one is very, very different than 98. Very, yeah. Yeah, they're both like disaster survival movies, you know, where that just happen to have like giant monsters in them. Yeah. But the tone is just so different than... Because Godzilla 98 is like fun popcorn, you know, like that old old fashioned disaster movie, like uh, yeah, it's like, like Independence Day, Twister, yeah. you know, stuff like that. What's Whereas, funny is that movie didn't even feel disastrous to me. Like it felt too, like it was just too much fun. Mm -hmm. Like I really enjoyed it, but I just never felt like I was at the edge of my seat ever. I guess. Yeah. Like you know, this is the the 2014 Godzilla. I was. You know, it, I mean, you would really like wait. I mean, just the way the beginning happens. I mean, other than that, I mean, it's pretty much just straight, just mm -hmm. nonstop. Yeah, and I hadn't seen 2014 for several years. I, I rewatched it last night with my aunt because she had seen it. She don't think she'd ever seen it, and she would. It was like how much how much it sh the beginning shook her. You know, with Brian Cranston and his wife. Yeah. And, and, his wife dying in the radiation accident and everything. Yeah. Well, you know, you gotta have an early death to set the tone. <laughs> yeah. But uh, this this one is really it's got a lot of interesting things to it. It's got you know it's got the American perspective of things with American scientists that are stationed in Japan helping yeah. with the nuclear technology and and the reactors and everything. And then you have the Japanese side of things, too, with, like, Dr. Serizawa, who is played by Ken Watanabe, who's great in everything. Yeah. Last Samurai, the Batman. To the yeah, Samurai. Last Samurai is my favorite, probably, of his, uh... Wasn't he in Crouching Tiger? He might have been. I swear, I think he was. It's It's been a while since yeah, I've seen Tiger. that. Yeah, that's, 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 that's old. <laughs> It might have been Chow Yun Fat. I don't remember which which one of the guys it mm. was. But, I can't remember. But any anyway, casting overall is really good. Uh, but I one issue I have with this movie, and it's a criticism that a lot of people had when it came out. But I guess I'll just rip the bandaid off right now because we can just I can I can just say my piece and then we can move on to talk, yeah. talk about the rest of it. So and all the trailers. You think Brian Cranston is the lead character because oh, because of the marketing, yeah, the yeah. way they cut it together, it was all focused about him. Aaron Taylor Johnson, Emily uh, Elizabeth Olsen, they're there, like they're characters. You understand that, but you're like, 
but Brian Cranston's the lead. Yeah. They're just like the supporting actors. Uh, spoiler alert, that's not what the movie's like. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, Brian Cranston comes in, does a great job. He's in like the first 30 minutes, and then he dies. <laughs> yep. Which, uh, this was when Brian Cranston was like blowing up really big. Yeah, I think it's because Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad, yeah. yeah. I mean, he'd been doing things forever, like in Malcolm in the Middle. Oh, yeah, he was hel early, absolutely hilarious as the dad in Malcolm in the Middle. But it was just, I was like, I, was like, I feel gypped, I feel tricked. You know, yeah. like, like I, I understand the frustration that the audience had about that. I was you know, like, I wasn't even that frustrated. Like, when I saw that, I was like, oh, he's not the main character. I was like, well, that's odd. And then I just, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, and... Uh, that's and then so Aaron Taylor Johnson's technically the lead of this, even though there's a lot of characters, a lot of stuff yeah. going on. Like, well, like, well, and also I think he was just coming off a of kick ass, so he wasn't really like. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I he, think, he's I still think, a fairly new actor. Yeah. I mean, I, I think he did both kick asses and then. Yeah. And Godzilla. I mean, I think now most people know who he is, but he's still kind of newish. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I think really since day one, I've really enjoyed just him mm -hmm. being on screen. Yeah, I I like him as an actor. This is not my favorite performance of his. That's my criticism. Yeah. Is like they're kind no, of no bullet trains. So. <laughs> bullet train. Yeah, bullet I tra love bullet train. Bullet train is peak Aaron Taylor yeah. Johnson. Uh, but yeah, this one he's I mean he's playing like stoic soldier man. So he's yeah, not a bomb technician. So he's he's not meant to be like a like a funny happy go lucky guy. You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah, he's not Matthew Broderick, okay, but he's... <laughs> no, no, of course not. <laughs> but he's... I think he's perfectly fine as the main character. It's just... It's just like... because People are always going to compare him to Brian Cranston in the movie because of how the movie was set up. It's yeah. Like them being father and son, and then father dying and son having to take the lead, basically. Yeah, and plus Brian Cranston's been... He's been acting for a really long time, so it's... Yeah. You know, hard to make that comparison. <laughs> yeah. And maybe that kid's been acting longer than what we think, but from my knowledge, I, I don't know how yeah, he's really I, been acting. I did, I never I, saw him anything but kick ass. Yeah, he, you know, he might have been a kid actor. He yeah. might, he might have been in like Spy Kids or something as kid number three or something. <laughs> yeah. You know, like a lot of, <laughs> a lot of leading men now come from like, yeah, little places like that. The, kid with the boom mic or something like that. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I I do like him. He's a decent protagonist. Yeah, not not definitely not my favorite of the MonsterVerse or anything, but he's serviceable enough, and I, I do think it's cool that he you know he gets to use his bomb to expertise throughout the movie. Like yeah. even, even though he's not technically deployed anymore, like he's come home to his family and mm -hmm. everything, but he gets back on the horse again to help with nuclear warheads and yeah arming them disarming them to face off against godzilla and the other threat in this movie that was basically hidden in the marketing too like yeah like in the if you watch the trailer you just see godzilla and only like a couple brief instances of him yeah so you're like okay so godzilla's the, the threat bad, yeah who, yeah like, who was the bad guy yeah the bad guy but not bad guy yeah <laughs> No, the, the main villains we got with this movie are called the MUTOs, which is actually just an acronym that, you know, the military in that universe came up with that is like a blanket term for creatures they don't understand. But they're basically Cloverfield cicadas. Yeah. That's how I would yeah. describe them. As... Let them fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, that that deservedly became a meme. Yeah. <laughs> I Anytime still, I see anything like that, I'm just <laughs> let them fight. Yeah. When you can tell conflict is brewing in a movie, let them fight. Yeah. <laughs> I kept saying that in the the new Godzilla. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So a lot a lot of stuff happens in this movie. The Mutos awaken and they they cause the accident that killed and killed Aaron Taylor Johnson's mom when he was a kid, which drives the plot of. Uh, Brian Cranston and him in the present day, 
you know, trying to figure out what the conspiracy was, what what actually happened to the wife, and like what actually killed them, because it wasn't just radiation; it was something else. And then figure out, oh, it's a it's a giant creature that feeds on radiation. That's that this happened to nest in the the reactor there in Japan where they were. And yeah. Then back now in the present day, when they're adults, the monarch, the scientist group that is in these all of these movies studies the giant creatures that they've been experimenting on it like trying to understand it because it's been dormant and then suddenly it wakes up and hatches out of the i can't remember what they call it it's like a spore or something I yeah think. The, the, i don't the, remember the, if they the, showed the, it or not the science the science in these movies is very weird so it, <laughs> you it's just like, accept it's, what's going on <laughs> That's it's like a giant giant arthropod thing that walks like a man, yet it comes out of a mushroom. You know, just weird shit. Yeah, weird shit. Like that. Uh, yeah. But you, you just it's giant monsters. You just kind of go with it. Yeah. You're like, just explain what you want to about this, but I'm not gonna not gonna try to make this realistic. <laughs> how any of this works? Yeah. Or not much explanation. You're just like, oh, okay. Yeah. And then uh, it's kind of funny we're talking about this movie specifically because it's about the two two giant radioactive cicadas waking up, and then and then breeding and trying to like like you know populate the world and populate the mm-hmm. world with a bunch of them because this is this year there happen to be two cicada crops coming at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> so, man, this thing's been all over the place. Yeah, just uh, I just thought that was a very funny coincidence that. Yeah, there's always a weird coincidence when we get together and do an episode, though. Yeah. It's a conspiracy. Yeah, and a strange occurrence. <laughs> <laughs> More on that later, audience. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we got... And that's that's one nickname that people have for this Godzilla movie is the Cloverfield Godzilla. Not only because the creatures remind people reminded us of the Cloverfield monster, but... Also, the way it's shot, the way, like, you only see bits and snippets of the creatures at a time where you, a lot of, like, most of the people in the movie don't understand what's happening. It's just giant monsters showing up out of nowhere and destroying cities. Yeah, I never really thought much about about that. Now, now until you say something. <laughs> yeah, but, I, but, yeah, I see a lot. I see a lot of it now. Now that you say something. And again, that wasn't my idea. That's just a a nickname that the internet came up with yeah. for this movie, which I think is appropriate. It just mm. pretty interesting and then so I'll get to it more with like, you know, the next Godzilla movie on down the line, but I really like how they do science in this universe, even though admittedly it doesn't make much <laughs> sense. Much yeah. sense. Yeah, they, but they're like they like study the kaiju. They have like species names. They they name them all different things, and like they're actually all in like the same group of animals, just like different species technically. Like like in Godzilla in this universe is Titanus Gojira, because uh-huh. so then they're all like Titanus something, you know, because they're all belong to that to the group that they call the Titans. Uh-huh. Which a little bit of backstory with that. They were originally gonna just call them kaiju, you know, like like Japanese movies do. They they just if yeah. it's a giant monster, it's a kaiju. The reason they switched it to Titans was because of Pacific Rim, mm-hmm. because they used the term kaiju for their creatures. Mm-hmm. And it's the same company making both movies and everything, so it's not like there's plagiarism or anything. I think they were just like trying not to confuse the audience to make them think, oh, they're in the same universe, you know, yeah. this different time period or something. Oh, they still, I, I feel like they still would because fan theories just go way too free and far and too long. <laughs> so I'm sure they would still find a way that that actually links together. Multiverse. Yeah. <laughs> Mult- multiverse where there's giant monsters in every universe for some reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they were actually thinking about doing a crossover between this Godzilla and then Pacific Rim. Yeah, I heard. I I thought that they were going to do that at, at some point. I'm glad they didn't. 
because I I just don't see it working well. Because you know the tone of these movies is yeah. very different than Pacific Rim, and they science so differently between the franchises. And mm. I mean, we don't get mechs in the MonsterVerse until like four movies in. Yeah. When Pacific Rim, the opening credits, there are mechs fighting giant monsters. Yeah. So it, I just don't think it would gel well. Audience, let us know if you if you'd want a crossover between those. If you'd be up for it, it's. it's I mean, I guess you know if you run out of ideas for the you know the movies, I guess you could do that because I'm not really for sure like how far this is gonna go. As long as they make money, they're gonna keep making <laughs> right. universe movies. Money. I've got to have money. Money. Yeah. Yeah. So. The overall, I really like this Godzilla because I, I, I don't want to take all day on this one movie. We got a lot to cover. I just yeah. want to kind of give my blanket feelings about it. Yeah, he was very and, dinosaur-like looking. Yeah, with my observation, like, you know how they always, for the monster in a movie, they always kind of study, like, a real-life animal and mm -hmm. they model their movements or whatever after them. Like with dragons, a lot of times, you know, how they climb on things mm -hmm. with their wings. And they're, yeah. they're kind of based on bats. Yeah. Well, the, this, the way he moves, when he when Godzilla moves on land, he reminds me of a grizzly bear, like on his mm -hmm. hind legs moving. Yeah. And like swatting things, you know, like with his arms. And grizzly bears don't have a long tail, but if they did, they would use the tail as a weapon. Like yeah. That. But when he swims, he's like a giant crocodile. I know, yeah. it's like the way his tail moves and like the spines coming out of the water and everything. Yeah. It's like a... Yeah, I see it. Also, this movie is... I, I really liked it just over like the aesthetics of it because it is like... It's kind of like you mixed Cloverfield mixed with Jurassic Park because of like some of the shots with helicopters and like the locations they're on and they're... Yeah. And then it's about a, a creature breaking out of containment and going on a rampage. And, and then there's stuff like Jaws, because it's just like building building tension, because you don't see the creatures for a long time, and then it, when they start showing up and destroying things. Yeah. So it, it's kind of like everything I like about movies rolled into one movie. Yeah. Which has its, has its flaws and everything, and I, I do think it cuts away from the monster action of like one too many times. It's the first time it was okay when it was the, the Hawaii fight, like between Godzilla and the one Muto, which that I that, like that was kind of a cool artistic thing where it's like it's the fight started and it cut, and then you see like news footage of the fight and then the Muto running away from Godzilla. Yeah, but it's not the it's not the finale, so they're not gonna like show all of the fight. They're, yeah, they're just building up to the big climax at the end. And I did not know, because I know this was kind of a realistic or grounded Godzilla. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what the... I didn't know if they were going to do Atomic Breath or not. Because I, I was like... Because it's so serious, like, so its own thing. I'm like, I don't know if they're going to do Atomic Breath or if he's just going to be a big brute that just, like, you know, physically kills these yeah. things. But when those spines lit up... <laughs> And the theater, ah! theater, and I hear the, I'm like, oh, they're doing it. It's, it's real. It's, it's happening. Yeah, I went to see that with uh, Logan and Alex opening oh, yeah. night on the, in the theater. And I think we were all just like cheering, like when we saw the blue come out the spine. <laughs> and we're like, like, it's an American Godzilla and he has atomic breath. We yeah. won, America. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I... Overall, I really like this movie. Even ten years later, it's it's good. I don't think it's my favorite MonsterVerse movie, but you need yeah. to know that I like each of these movies for different reasons. Mm. Just, yeah. But uh, the next movie in the franchise is really interesting. We're gonna instead of going forward in time, we're actually gonna go back in time because this movie takes place in 2014, which was the present day when it came out. But this one, we're going back to 1973 with Kong Skull Island. Mm. So stay tuned for that. That will be on our next segment. So see you then.